Hello, welcome to this new video. The game store on the Atari VCS has more than 100 great games. However, the selection is limited, if you compare it to Steam for example. Steam is a uh, game store focused on games you play on a PC. Now the Atari VCS is a hybrid game console and PC. So games from Steam can also be played on the VCS, in its PC mode. In this video you can see how you can set up Steam on the Atari VCS. As an uh, underlying operating system you can choose uh, Linux or Windows. And because Linux is uh, asking less from the system and is freely available, it became a popular choice for Steam systems. That is why I also chose Linux. And there are various Linux distributions and various ready-made installers for Linux with Steam included. So there's a lot to choose from. Let's have a look which one we are going to use for the VCS. I have chosen for Chimera OS. You can download it for free at ChimeraOS.org. Chimera OS promises a uh, console gaming experience on a PC and in our case on an uh, Atari VCS. When Chimera OS is started, you immediately end up in Steam in uh, big picture mode. Or I believe this is now Gamepad mode. But in any case, an uh, interface comparable to the Steam Deck. And that is what we want on the VCS. So we download Chimera OS with the big download button. Then we come on the download page that shows the hardware requirements. 8 GB of RAM, uh, uh, 64 GB storage device and an uh, AMD GPU. And that looks that it fits well with the VCS. We go further down and then click on uh, download again. The image of the installer is now being downloaded. To get the image on a uh, USB drive you also need Balena Etcher. So we are going to download that too. I download the Windows version. Then we wait until everything is downloaded. In the meantime, let's have a look at the USB drive. Chimera OS uh, indicated that at least 64GB is needed. I bought this uh, SanDisk 64GB USB drive. This drive uses uh, USB 3.0. That is also the minimum that uh, is required. USB 2.0 is uh, too slow. Now you also have uh, USB 3.1 and USB 3.2. These are even faster, but I don't think the VCS supports this yet. So Chimera will be on uh, this USB drive. But we also need a second USB drive for the installer. And a USB drive with lower uh, specifications can be used for this. I still have this uh, 8 GB USB drive. This is still a USB 2.0, but for the installer that's no problem. It uh, just makes the installation uh, take a bit longer. In the meantime, the two files have been downloaded and I have placed them in this folder. First we're going to install Etcher. Now uh, I had already installed it once, so in my case it started uh, immediately. Step 1 is to select the downloaded image. Then we choose the USB drive where the image should be written to. I already uh, connected the small 8 gig uh, USB drive to the USB port of the computer. We choose this and then we come to the last step, writing the image to the USB drive. That is done and the USB drive can be removed from the computer. Then we go to the VCS. There we connect the small USB drive to one of the USB ports. During the installation process a keyboard and a mouse uh, are needed. I use my uh, mini 2-in-1 system for this. But before we continue uh, there is something to note. In order to boot from the USB drive a secure boot must be disabled. This has been uh, disabled from the start on my system. 
because it also had to be disabled to install the system update from the USB drive when setting up the system for the first time. This will be the case for many VCS owners. But if you had a VCS that worked straight out of the box, uh, Secure Boot may be enabled. You can disable it as follows. Switch on the VCS and then immediately start pressing the escape key regularly. You will then end up in the BIOS setup. Go to administer secure boot there. You may be asked uh, for a password. I will place uh, that password in the comments. Here you can see that the secure boot is already disabled on my system. If it is uh, enabled on your system, you can easily disable it here. Then press F10 to save this and go to continue to continue the boot process. Then the Chimera installer will be loaded. Because I am using a USB 2.0, it may take a while for the installer to start. But uh, something is happening. Ah, we come on the first screen. And that is a very important screen, because here we select where we want to install Chimera OS. We want it to go on the 64GB USB drive, but I have not connected that one to the VCS, because I want to be sure that we do not accidentally override Atari OS. In the list we see uh, as first the M2 drive that I installed recently, the second is uh, the system drive with Atari OS on it, then the third and fourth uh, are the volumes of the installation USB drive. We must remember the names of these drives. Because I am now going to connect the 64GB USB drive to the other USB port. And I am going to restart the VCS. So we come back to the list of drives. Now we see that an uh, SDB row has been added. And now we know for sure that this is our 64 GB drive for Chimera OS. We select this drive and press enter. Now a message uh, appears uh, indicating that we are going to install Chimera OS on an external drive. And they cannot guarantee that it will work. But we are aware of that, so we continue. And we get another warning that uh, everything on the USB disk will be overwritten. But uh, this is an empty disk anyway, so that's fine. Now the installation starts. The necessary files will be downloaded. Now my VCS is connected to the internet via a cable. But if you use Wi-Fi, then you will get a configuration screen to set up your Wi-Fi connection. After downloading, the installation will start. And that can take a while. So we let the system do its thing and uh, come back later. And there is suddenly a sign of life again. Ah, it's ready. We can reboot the VCS. But first we uh, remove the small USB drive. Of course we will leave the 64 GB drive with Chimera OS in place. Then we are going to restart now. Oh, all sorts of things happening. Oh, we have an error message. It uh, looks like it's trying to do something with the other drives, uh, which is not allowed to do so. Well, that's a uh, good thing. But it's uh, continuing now. And it seems to be finished. But it hasn't started up with Steam. 
we are in the Linux desktop. So I'll just start uh, Steam manually. Hey, what's going on here? Okay, it needs to be uh, logged in. And uh, yes, that part I have removed from the video. Now I'm in Steam, but I still see it's not a good mode. But this gives me the opportunity to set up the controller. I'm uh, going to use an uh, Xbox controller for now. That's connected. Let's restart the system. I have now restarted and it uh, seems to have started in the right mode. Here we can select the language. For this video I will set it to English. And now looking for the European time zone. Yes, this one, Central Europe. I used a uh, fixed internet connection so Wi-Fi can be turned off. Ah, welcome to Steam Desk. <laughs> Yes, this is the correct interface. Just go uh, through these steps and uh, we can start. Now it's the case that I do not have many games in Steam yet. Actually, the only games I have can also be found in the VCS game store. Last year uh, you could buy a bundle with all recharged games from Atari with a reduced price. Let's install Centipede. And here it is. Yes, we know this. Let's try uh, Ricky and Vicky. This is a uh, game for the Atari 17800. With Steam you can play this because uh, a customized 17800 emulator for Windows is uh, also included. And uh, to play this on Linux it uh, uses a Windows emulator again. But it works. Only it does not respond to the controller. I do have to set up something somewhere. Well this looks good. I have to figure out that sometime. Or if anyone knows how to set up this, uh, please let me know in the comments section. But uh, yeah, it looks like uh, Steam works. Let's see if it can turn off the system. But now uh, let's try to control Steam with the Atari VCS Modern Controller. For that we go to the settings and then go to Bluetooth. It now searches for uh, Bluetooth controllers. You should be uh, able to sync the controller by uh, pressing uh, these two buttons and then the Atari button. But uh, hmm, nothing's happening yet. The controller only turns off. Maybe uh, they should be pressed uh, when turning it on. Still nothing. 
Maybe uh, press the button briefly. No, still nothing. Maybe uh, someone knows how to do this? Then uh, please uh, describe it in the comment section. Now I'm going to try it with a cable. I connect the cable to the USB port on the front. Ah, and uh, immediately it sees an uh, Atari game controller. So uh, wired, uh, the Atari controllers works immediately. That's nice. Now that Steam is fully functional and with the Atari controller, uh, I want to know if Atari OS is still working. All I have to do is uh, disconnect this uh, USB drive and start uh, VCS. Ah, thank goodness. The system still boots normal with the uh, Atari OS. So now we can uh, simply insert a USB drive into the VCS and use Steam. That opens the doors to many possibilities. Also to a possibility that suddenly became very topical during the recording of this video. Atari announced this week that the two new DLCs of Atari 50, the anniversary celebration, will not be coming to the VCS store, while this was promised. To accommodate the owners of Atari 50, they will be sending download codes for Atari 50 extended editions for other systems, including Steam. So this way you can still play the two DLCs on the VCS with Steam. Let's look up uh, Atari 50 in the Steam store. We go to the store and then to search. I'll turn off verified, uh, then I will get more results. And here we see them. These are the two DLCs. And this is Atari 50 itself. If we open it, uh, we can see that we can choose between the regular edition and the expanded edition. But we also see uh, Atari 50 has the playable status. If we look uh, at what this means, it means that sometimes the letters are a bit small on the screen of the Steam Deck. But we won't have uh, a problem with that on a normal screen. And something with the Steam Deck native resolution. Uh, we don't have to do with that either. Now Atari just has to send the download codes and then I can watch Atari 50 DLCs on the VCS. If you also want to receive download codes, I have placed a link to a video in the comment which explains how to obtain the codes. And with this we have reached the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Then I only ask you to give this video a like and uh, subscribe to the channel and if you also write something in the comment then will you make me very happy. For now, see you at the next Gespiatari Stuff video. Bye!